So, yes, let's go ahead and start at 1 Corinthians. Um, no, let's go ahead and just start at verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1. Now, this is Paul writing. It says, not concerning the matters uh, about which you wrote, it is good for a man to not have sexual relations with a woman. But because of the uh, temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except uh, perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you do not, that you may not devote yourselves that I'm sorry, that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, this is Paul speaking to uh, the Corinthians, and we all know that the Corinthians, they were just coming out of um, a lot of this paganism and false ideologies and, and um, all of these false teachings and stuff uh, about sexual uh, uh, about sexual immorality. I mean, they're, they're, when you really start to read about the, the uh, history of the Corinthian church, um, a lot of these folks were coming out of a lot of bad practices. You know what I'm saying? So that is kind of the context of what Paul is reading or writing actually at this point. All right, so let's continue to read. Now as a concession, not a command, I say this. I wish that all were as myself, uh, as I myself am. But each has his own gift from God. One of, uh, one of one kind and another. To the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to remain single as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So if you are a person, you know, whether you're male or female, and if you desire to be with um, a man or a woman, you know, of course, to somebody of the opposite sex, then it's better for you to get married. Right. Um but Paul is basically saying that I wish that a lot of you would just be single like me, right? But he's basically saying, but he's not saying that as a command. He's just saying that, you know, as a concession, as a recommendation, right? Because if you're, and I've tried, and I've seen people try to live these single lives, I'm just going to be just as traveling evangelist. Um, and I don't have time for a wife. I don't have time for children or anything like that i'm just going to go out preach travel from here to there and a lot of times these men end up following falling into sexual immorality they end up sleeping around instead of focusing on being married having a wife and children they think that they can although they still have those urges as men they think that they can suppress those urges and go out and just be like these single evangelists or these single pastors or whatever. But in doing that, you catch someone's eye. And sometimes those and sometimes that person whose eye that you've caught, she may be attractive. And you may, you know, you may want to. <laughs> You know, you may be like, okay, well, hey, she's feeling me. I'm feeling her. But if you got this mindset to where you're just like, no, I'm just trying to stay on this certain path and you're trying to suppress your attraction to that person, that can be a hard battle. So it's, it's, not, it's not going against the Bible or it is not unlawful for a man to not have to have an attraction towards a woman and not and, and marry her, right? So as a man, if you see a woman, a Christian woman, if you're a Christian man 
and you desire to be married to a Christian woman, then what Paul is saying is that that's what you should do. Because if you have that attraction or if you have that desire, but then you ignore that thinking that you're going to do something else, you can end up in um, having a moral, uh, uh, a moral failure sexually. Oh, yeah.